Hello and welcome to this AE Basics Extra tutorial. It came about because I did a training course recently and during that training course the people wanted to know how to do some slightly more advanced repeater functions. So what I'm going to do is, is two tutorials. One just to show you how to create a little character, repeat him across and down screen and then scale the whole thing up. And in the second tutorial I'm going to show you how to do more advanced things with different pieces of text that we've created shapes from and then turn them into circles and from circles to straight lines and all kinds of different bits and pieces. So for this first tutorial I'm going to create a little man but just here's a little keyboard shortcut that you may not know which is quite useful. If you look at the screen you'll see that we've got this spare space at the top which we really don't want to see. If you do control or command a backslash it maximizes the screen to get rid of that spare space at the top and at the bottom. So that's command or control backslash that actually gives you the ability to set the whole screen up and get rid of any wasted space. So I'm going to choose the shape tools. I've got no layers selected so I'm going to be creating shapes and I'm going to go down and choose the ellipse tool and you'll see up here that my fill, if I click the word fill, is a solid color. Click OK and it's this blue color and that stroke has been clicked to zero to none so there is no stroke to go with my fill so it's just going to have fill and now I'm going to with my ellipse I'm, I'm going to create my man here however if I create my man here I'm going to end up with a very big man that won't repeat much across the screen and actually I want to create quite a small man so I'm going to hold my spacebar and I'm going to drag the top left hand corner into the middle of my screen and I'm going to zoom up to about 200% and just drag it back holding the spacebar so that I know that when I create this man it's actually going to be fairly small in comparison to the size of my workspace, my screen. So I'm going to click to create the head. I'm not going to draw anything particularly brilliant, this little head. Then I'm going to choose the rounded rectangle tool just by clicking and holding on the shape bits until the others show, rounded rectangle. And then I'm going to click and drag to create the body. Now if you get it off center like this and you're still holding your mouse button if you hold the space bar you can actually physically shift him around or shift the body around or the shape around until it's in about the right place. That'll do, as I say I'm doing something very rough at the moment. Then I'm going to click to create one arm, so just click and drag so one arm's created. And then what I really want to do is duplicate that arm, so I'm just going to select it where it says rectangle 2 and duplicate it, control or command a D. And that will be the second arm, the top one, so I can just take my selection tool and I can physically click and drag that across. And, and if you're dragging across and you can't get it sorted out, hold the shift key after you stop dragging and you'll see that it'll be dragging on the same level. So that's a good way of working. And then I'm going to go back to my rounded rectangle tool to do a couple of legs. Again this is just very rough and ready. There's one leg and I'm probably going to want to duplicate that. Again so select the top one, command or control D and take my selection tool and shift it across whilst holding the shift key after you start moving. You can't hold the shift key first. It's one of those slight oddities about After Effects. If you hold the shift key first, you lose your selection. But if you start moving and then hold the shift key, then you'll be able to move it and uh, constrain its movement. So there you go. We've got a little man. If I wanted to, I could rename all of these. So for instance, Ellipse. If I was to hit the Enter key, I could call that Head and go through all the others. I'm not going to actually do that, but you could do that to rename all these if you wish to. Now every single one of these is a shape in its own and so it has its own transform, do bear in mind. But also at this stage it would be good to group them. Now two ways of grouping them, one is just to select the top and select the bottom or vice versa and do control or command G. But if you aren't keen with keyboard shortcuts the other way to remember is to select the layer at the top, add group and then you get an empty group at the bottom and then you select them with the shift key and just drag them into the group and you can rename a group. So where it says group 1 I could hit enter and rename it. All I'm going to actually do is rename my layer, hit enter and call it my man stroke men. You'll see why in a minute. Hit enter. So there are all my shapes. I've actually got notes transform for the whole group as well. So I could if I wanted to play around with the transforms of the group but it's not quite as easy as you think basically because of anchor points and what have you. So for instance if I start scaling you'll see scales on and off screen because the anchor point is in the middle of the, the layer or wherever. So I'm not necessarily going to play with those but just point out that they are there. Now I'm going to select the layer at the top and the idea is that we want to make this man go across screen and then we want him to go down screen. We want to see how that animation is actually going to work. Firstly I want to get back to the point where I can see my screen in full 
keyboard shortcut is shift forward slash but actually I'm just going to click here and click fit and you'll see that he's quite small in comparison to the overall screen so selecting the layer at the top I'm going to go to the add button and go repeater and you'll see that instantly the repeater always comes in with default settings three repetitions and always offset in the X direction now the offset is standard at a hundred pixels so if I open up the repeater down here you'll see three copies and if I open up the transform you'll see that position has always got the X position set by a hundred which means that this one is offset a hundred from this one and this one will be offset a hundred from this one and if I created more copies I'm going to pull some copies across so that we're pretty much three quarters of the way across screen 16 copies everyone is offset by 100 pixels from the previous one okay so now what we want to do is we want to animate them out and there are two ways to animate one is going to create a concertina effect and the other one is going to create a sort of a fade on effect and I'm going to show you them both so we're going to do the concertina effect across and then briefly we'll do the concertina down and then we'll change it to the fade on so to do that what we actually want to do is animate position we don't want to animate copies at the moment, we don't want to animate position. So I'm going to click the stopwatch for position and then I'm going to reset it so that it's zero, 00. And the simplest way is just to right click on the word position and click reset. And now all my 16 copies are underneath one man. And then I'm going to go forward about half a second. And usually with these types of animations you don't want them to take too long. If it takes a second to come on screen, sometimes that can just be agonizingly long. So you don't want to do that, just you want to make it fairly quick, you want to make it a good animation but still fairly fast for good motion graphics. Timing is everything with motion graphics. So on position, on the X position, I'm going to click in there and take it back up to 100. And then hit enter, and they've all gone across. And now I've got an animation. If I hit the spacebar to play, you see that they come across. And you see what I mean by the concertina effect. The concertina out from each other. So that's across and I could change the name of the repeater to reflect that so this is repeater 1 and all I can do is select it and hit enter and then click at the end and just put X and then to be clear I can put across so that's my repeater across and now I want a repeater that goes down okay so I'm just going to go out so we can see all of them I probably want my repeater to start about half a second later so I'm going to go to the top layer again so the top of the layer so where it says man men add repeater and you'll see at the moment it, it doesn't look quite right something's added at the end and basically the three repetitions have all been added to this layer and underneath the ones that are already there so if I open up this second repeater and I open up its three copies and if I was to do more you'd see more men at the end but if you open up its transforms and then you start to move the second property the Y property down you'll see that the repetitions were underneath the other one all offset by 100 which was the default setting so if I was to take that X the across value back to zero these two men would line up at the beginning so if I take that back to zero again uh, I'll just click in there and type zero now you can see I know the default setting is 186 I'm going to make it 190 when we actually do it so at this point I could click the position stopwatch and take that back again to zero and then I can go forward again about half a second and take that to we said 190 didn't we so 190 and those three have come down of course I could add more and probably have five in here so I'm going to go from copies from three to five and so I've got a repeater that repeats across and then a repeater repeats down now again I've got the concertina effect a concertinaing out from the second lot but the other way of doing it is actually to make them fade on screen by animating the copies but it's a very different look so what I'm going to do is go to this point at the end where it's 190 they're all on screen and turn off the stopwatch so no animation for the position but what I am going to do is I'm going to animate the copies and I'm just going to come back to my one second mark click the stopwatch for copies and type in there one enter and then go forward about half a second and then type in five and so what we've got is the man coming across with the concertina but then fading on for the other ones and this is different options to achieve a similar result concertina or fade on and it's just good to know that you've got those options for different looks when you actually fade things in and out 
The final thing we want to do is actually move the whole layer up to the side so we can have additional motion graphics around the edge. And to do that, we need to remember that we are part of a layer. And we've got transforms for the whole layer. First, let's just change the name of this repeater. So I'm going to hit enter. At the end, I'm going to go Y and down so we know which repeater is doing which. But let's look at the layer at the bottom. So if I open up the transforms for the layer, what I want to do is sort of fade it up into this corner. First thing to do, move the anchor point. So take the pan behind tool and take the anchor point to the top left of the layer, just there. And then when I actually scale, I'll be scaling up into that corner. So if I take that back to 100 just by right clicking scale, hit the stopwatch, go forward again about half a second or so, and then scale it down to the appropriate point then I've got plenty of room to do all kinds of other motion graphics at that point so I might make it just a little bit bigger. So now we've got the animation just going to go forward to three seconds or so and hit N to end my work area bar and then hit the space bar because this is a very lightweight animation I don't need to do a RAM preview it goes Constantina across, fades on and scales up and that's a simple use of the repeater of which the key is to realize that there is more than one set of transforms. There are transforms for the actual shapes transforms for the repeater and of course you still have full access to the transforms for the layer itself. In the next tutorial we're going to look at creating a specific shape from a text and then being able to turn it into circles and make those circles go straight and do all kinds of interesting bits and pieces by looking at the various transform options we have when we do more shape work. I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching.